Okay, let's learn algebra variables in 10 minutes. So really, um, this video might go a little bit shorter than 10 minutes, it might go a little bit longer, but more or less I think we can cover a lot of ground in 10 minutes or, or so. Now, this uh, title of this video could be a little misleading. It says learn algebra variables. Really, it's just variables, and variables are part of algebra. So we're going to highlight some really important things about it and distinguish um, this idea of algebra, what makes it unique. So let's take a look at something here real quick. So when you're first learning math, you're in elementary school, kindergarten, first grade, etc., you are doing things like 2 plus 7. You're working with numbers, right? And this type of math here is basically what we call like arithmetic, right? Basic math, 2 plus 9. You'll learn how to work with fractions, 2 over 7, etc. As you transition into your middle school years, especially your high school years, you're going to be learning algebra, okay? Now, algebra, in a lot of ways, is essentially arithmetic. We're still doing, we're still working with numbers, but instead of actual specific numbers, we also use variables. So here we have, we're adding up two numbers, specifically 2 plus 7. But in algebra, we can have something like this, x plus y, and this means that we're adding up two different numbers as well. So let me go ahead and define what a variable is, and then we'll go from there. So a variable in algebra, in mathematics, is nothing more than a symbol, okay? Oftentimes it's a letter that represents a number. Okay, so anytime you see an X, a Y, a Z, a W, anything like that, it, it's a placeholder for a number. Now what number do you want, um, or what number specifically does these variables um, uh, represent? Well, it's all up to you, okay? So for example, I could say, well, let's just let X equal to two and Y equal to seven. So we can think of this expression as 2 plus 7. Or I can switch this around and be like, well, it's uh, x equals 1 and y equals 9, and we can have another um, different problem that we're adding up two different numbers. So in algebra, variables are placeholders for numbers. Now, you've been actually working with variables for some time. You probably don't even realize it. So let's go back uh, when you were like in first, second grade, and you know, let's look at these problems, right? Remember uh, your homework, I'm sure we all had it. Even myself, I don't, well, maybe. It's probably been 40 something years, <laughs> kind of given my wage uh, here. But let's say I had a problem like this, right? Everyone kind of remembers this in first grade. So we have a box plus three equals five. And, uh, and you basically, hey, you know, to get the smiley face from your teacher, you have to figure out what number goes into the box, right? So this box is a symbol, right? It's not a letter, it's a symbol, but it represents a number. Some number, we gotta figure out what number to plug in there to make this true. Of course, we would all get, we'd all put two, and we'd get all these little awards, a bunch of stars, etc. But this is the idea, so even at an early age, we have this concept of what a variable is. It's a placeholder for a number. Now. Some other type of variables that you might be familiar with is something like this. So this is the symbol for pi, okay? Now pi, and hopefully most of you are, are um, familiar with this, I'll just tell you very briefly. If we have a circle, if we take the distance around the, the circle, that's called the circumference, and we divide it by the diameter, for any circle, you're going to get this number around 3.14, and it keeps going on and on and on. Okay, this number goes on to infinity because the decimal uh, part of this 3.14, it doesn't end. It's what we call non-terminating and non-repeating. So to know what the digit, the hundredth digit is way out here, we'd actually have to calculate it out. So we won't, we'll, we'll really know we really will not know what the end of this number is. So we say, you know what, we're not going to be, you know, <laughs> uh, crazy and write out this entire number because you cannot write it out, right? So we'll just say, listen, this whole number, let's just assign it a symbol and we'll call it that, pi. And then there's other famous uh, ones in mathematics, a small e, as you uh, progress in your mathematics journey. Uh, this is a very important 
number as well. It's approximately 2.718, uh, if I'm not mistaken, on and on and on. And that has a big meaning in math. Of course, pi is approximately 3.14. So these are symbols, letters, you know, boxes, circles, even something like this, blank plus 7 equals 8. This little underline, we could consider a variable. It's a symbol. It's a placeholder for a number. So let's talk about a few things here in algebra that you're going to see that are going to be relevant. So if I have x plus z, I have two different numbers. Generally speaking, I can interpret this. This is an algebraic or variable expression. We can kind of think of this as one number plus another number. So we have one number plus another number. Now, the value of z and x can be the same, but this is a good phrase to represent what's going on here. x plus y, one number plus another number. And you're going to have to know how to do this when you're, when you're working with variables. You're going to have to be able to take a, um, a verbal statement and translate it into a variable statement. All right, so this is part of a set of skills that you'll need to learn as you progress um, in your math journey. Now, let's take a look at something like this, 3x. So if I write the number, or a number, in front of a variable, let's say, for example, 3x, or maybe 8y, or negative 10z, what does that mean? What does this 3 in front of the x mean here? doesn't mean 3 plus x. Okay, this is, that would be this, 3 plus x. It's certainly not 3 minus x. This is multiplication, okay? This means 3x is 3 times x. This is the product of 3 and x. So in algebra, when you see things like this, the number in front of this variable is, is a, um, a product, okay? So this is 8 times some number, y. Okay, this is negative 10 times some number z. So in algebra, kind of a little terminology, these little guys here are considered terms. This is a term, okay? And the number in front of the term is called a coefficient. Coefficient. Just kind of abbreviate that because I'm sure <laughs> I'll misspell it. So we have a coefficient and we have a variable. And then sometimes, too, we'll even have powers. Let me go ahead and show you how that looks. So let's say we can have 3x and 3x squared. So this is one term, okay? The coefficient is 3. The variable part is x. And then this is a, a another term. Let me go ahead and highlight this. So the coefficient is 3, but the variable part here is x squared. Now something that you're going to have to definitely know about, and I think we'll kind of call it a wrap here after I just kind of introduce you to this concept, is the concept of like terms. So like terms. Okay, so let's say I have 3x and 4x. Now these two terms here, these two terms, we can we, uh, we consider these guys like. Okay, now the reason why they're like, and remember these are independent terms, is because they have the same exact variable part. Okay, so in algebra we can actually add these guys or subtract them. So 3x plus 4x is equal to 7x. Okay, so in algebra, when you have like terms, you can you can add them up by simply adding the coefficient parts. But let's take a look at another scenario. Let's say I have 3x plus 4x squared. Okay, so I have one term here, and I have another term here. Now in this case, this this example, these are not like, not like terms. Now, why do you think that is? Well, hopefully it's pretty obvious to you that this is an x and this is an x squared. So the rule is, if the variable parts are different, you cannot add them. Okay, we can't add these guys up. All right, so we just leave this expression the way it is. That's as simple as that's as simple as it can go. So 3x plus 4x squared is as simple as we can write that in algebra. However, 
3x plus 4x, we want to write that as uh, 7x. Okay. All right, so I think I'm pretty close to the 10 minute mark and hopefully you know you definitely uh, got a I think we covered a pretty decent amount here uh, certainly about variables of course there's a lot more to learn but one you know you know you should have uh, you know we've got a basic definition of what a variable is right it's a placeholder for, placeholder for a number we also distinguished why we kind of need them because in algebra we start using variables okay uh, and that's different than what we've been doing in elementary school. And then we talked about terms, um, what they are, and like terms, etc. Okay, so I'm going to go and wrap this up. If you got something out of this video, I certainly hope you would consider giving it a thumbs up. And also, I literally have hundreds of videos uh, on my YouTube channel. Of course, if you haven't figured it out by now, I am a math teacher, teacher from sixth grade on. And I have. Uh, um, a really comprehensive uh, learning program uh, with just I got several several courses on various different levels of math diff different type of uh, for different needs so whether you're taking SAT, ACT, GED, studying for your teachers exams I have uh, very comprehensive courses that I built over the years many years so I'm very proud of that because I put um, a lot of my experience into building something that's high quality uh, learning program to help those of you out there. So if you're, you know, maybe in middle school, uh, high school, whatever, and you, you like my teaching style, you can find a course that probably lines up to what you're doing. So I'll leave the link in the description of uh, my video if you want to check out my uh, courses. And last but not least, I always appreciate comments. I try to read as many as I can. It's the way I know how I'm doing. And your comments also give me uh, um, ideas for future videos. But with that being said, I definitely appreciate your time. I wish you well and have a great day.